I mean, it's just like any other corporation, right? Like you have a team comes in or someone comes into a position, they have to do something. You have to be always moving forward, increasing revenues, whatever. Like how Olympics are, right? It's an under twenty three tournament essentially with like a few players sprinkled over the age of over a certain age. Maybe they can do that for club World Cup. How useless is international break, bro? I hate it. Like I absolutely hate it. Not because of that incident international break, but because of I think we just had such a big tournament, we just had such a long season, and you can't expect clubs who are playing players salary to not play them because of whatever X Y Z reason. And the fact that all of these players who were a big part of all these teams are called upon again without I mean they could have easily been given a 15 day break. I don't think any of those fixtures are meaningful enough to not give them a break. So how useless it is? Are you worried about your players getting injured? Do you think that's going to happen? Thank Kind of depends on who is going to be playing. I think England has like two useless players to qualify for the World Cup or something. But it's it's pretty useless. I think I think it's it's. it's I don't know why we should have three international breaks: one in September, one in October, and one in November. We just combine everything into one big break or at least two, right? Because there's a lot going on, especially with Champions League. We have like four additional features we are going to play. How are you going to fit everything into one time? How like, yeah. you're basically killing the golden rule. Like you, 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 these players are performing for you. Like if you look at uh, uh, what was that guy's um, that Lam- Yamin Lamal or, or or even Joe Bellingham or anything like, look at the number of moves. Have played so far with club and country at the at their respective ages, and compare that to Rooney and Ronaldo. Look at the number. Of, look at how much they are extra they're playing. And yeah. we're still doing this for random friendlies and random. You know, I don't know. I think England is going to qualify no matter what. You know, if Jim Bellingham plays or not, but he's still called up to the Olympics. He's still called yeah. up to play. If you are going to just keep doing this all the time, if you are going to kind of just impose on players that you know you you are you are needed for these you know random friendlies against Andorra or San Marino, then what's the point? Why do yeah. this? And why can't they be more tested, right? Because you have Champions League, you have a FA and FIFA. Can't they just kind of get get on a conference call and then just sort this shit out? No, they can't. I mean, no, they can, but they won't. Because yeah. of the fact that they want to make sure that they have these stupid nations league going on on the side, they have all of these things coming in, and they they have support nations league except Cristiano Ronaldo. Ronaldo Nobody is the only person. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Only if you win. Like who cares about nations league? Who cares about what you're doing in the game? In, in, in that kind of, in that uh, competition, right? Like, so it's just so many competitions. Like the Club World Cup is expanding, Champions League is expanding, and then you have the Nations League, you have all the international breaks, and for some reason we won't get rid of the League Cup in in the English League. Yeah. yeah. And how are you going? And the thing there is, it's not like you can play everyone, right? I think you expect people to all the star players to show up even in a League Cup final. You have you expect everyone to play, and then. Thing is, there's there's no looking back. It's just that you're know, just running these players into the ground all the time, and I don't see an end to it. Like, at what point are you going to draw the line and say, okay, this is enough? So, so my to your question and my point, yes, the nation, this this international breaks are such a bane to modern football at this point. They are just yeah. they just happen because they just happen. They were designed that way, and then people just want players to play over. There's no value coming out of it. And I think there was a proposal. I'm not sure from when it is in effect. I think there is a proposal where they say that okay, maybe we can shorten the three international breaks into two or something. Maybe that goes from 25 to 46 or something. I'm not sure when that's going to take into effect, but we need to kind of cover it as soon as possible. What's the what's the deal with this FIFA World Cup thing? Uh, the Club World Cup is it going to be every year? I know it's expanded to 32 teams or something like that. Yeah, I think again, I might be wrong, but basically what they're trying to do is they're trying to expand it and then. So basically, right now, the way the football calendar is, in the even years, you have World Cup or a Euro, alternatively, right? Yeah. So I think in the odd years, I think one season is going to be the Nation Series or something like that, and then on the other season is going to be the Club World Cup in the US. So FIFA wanted more of these players, and I think even during this season or maybe next season. Uh, even the, the the way you kind of participate in this club world cup is based on your coefficient, I guess. I think depending on how well you perform in, oh, in your that, competitions or the last really? season. So, I, you know, so I think Arsenal can be you know, can be relaxed about it. So, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for the thank you for the slight comment. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but generally, like I think, you know, I think they're basically trying to see how they can have more in the. It's a moot point. Like, why? Because you know the European clubs are going to win. 
when was the last time any FIFA Club World Cup was won by someone not from here? Tell me that. Maybe I don't know. I think 2005 or 6 or something. Maybe when they they stopped. When we they when, maybe when they were not invited into the Club World Cup. Yeah, exactly. Maybe when it was right. before. Yeah. What's yeah? What's the point of it? Because the Champions League is the pinnacle. No, the club thing. Football, the thing so. is. I mean, it's just like any other corporation, right? Like, you have a team comes in or someone comes into a position, they have to do something. You have to be always moving forward, increasing revenues, whatever. So, because of that, they will always try to bring in new things. Always. Yeah. It's always going to happen. With more things, there's less space for other new things. So, I hope we will hit a point where they won't be introducing all these weird random tournaments. But this will still continue to happen. And yeah. this is not a big surprise. And who knows what happens in the next 20 years. Maybe the football in another continent might pick up like I think I personally think maybe Africa can in the future because they still you know it's a place where you get a lot of good players from they just haven't organized themselves into the problem that can happen right in 20-30 years that can happen why not finances no no finances bro like I think it requires 30 years is reasonable I mean maybe sure I don't know yeah. yeah, we don't know. Anyways, so yeah, it's just a thing. And maybe if you really think about it, it might be really beneficial for those clubs. Yeah. I mean, the European club is going to win it, doesn't matter. But it might be a big source of revenue for the other smaller clubs from the other continents. So maybe they're just doing it for that. Yeah. So no, I think that's, that's my point. That's actually the point a good point. Is, don't be greedy about it, right? Like, you know, if, if you want a club World Cup to be expensive. Can get, get rid of the league cup. If you, I mean, you're, you're expanding fans and you're expanding the World Cup as well. How are you expecting the players to cope up with this pressure from international clubs and, and the club players? Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. a club like Liverpool, a club like Arsenal or City, I think their their players are going to play 60 games through the course of the season. If you look at Real Madrid and City or City, and Rodri or Bellingham, they played like 40 or 60 games. But I think how, <coughs> how are you expecting that they will have the same level of performance? Like you've seen how much Bellingham performance has dropped in the year. You know what, I also think these red cards mm-hmm. should apply for international breaks as well. Because then, the FA will think twice while giving a red card to Declan Rice. Yeah. <laughs> you know what we can do? We can actually, I mean, they what they should do. Like how Olympics are, right? It's an under-23 tournament essentially with like a few players sprinkled over the age of, over a certain age. Maybe they can do that for Club World Cup where, you know, players... I, 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 mean, I think you should be uh, calm, right? Uh, even though it's an international break, at least Nunes will be safe. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's what he's not calm about. That's that's not what that's what he's not calm about. He's worried about that because then somebody gets injured, then Nunes will be there to play. <laughs> I don't know, man. With Nunes, you can never you can never say anything. I spent too much of my time last season playing about Nunes. I don't want to do it again. Okay. 